Mangwana mi mwalelepo vukenja mikrekto asimanave Africa. Welcome to Africa. Good morning. The news and current affairs show bringing you everything you need to know happening on the African continent and beyond. You are joined by Ashwin Berry and Glenora Shipura. How are you, Glenn? I'm doing very well. A little bit sad that this is our last Africa Good Morning for, for the, the year. year. Yes, it is indeed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, are I'm you excited I'm, for Christmas though? I am. I'm very excited. What mm. are you doing for Christmas? You no, said it's going to be with family and you know, I certainly hope everybody else uh, can be with family. If not, uh, you know, may be able to stay in touch with them. But it's been a wonderful year on Africa Good Morning, making sure we always bring you the pertinent stories happening in Africa and beyond. And of course, we'd like to thank all our correspondents. Today we will talk to Ma Mike, Ishmael Mike. Yes. but we'd like to thank uh, Talent Gore Ari Hohad as well, and all the media folks, the journalists, and everybody who's been helping make this show come together, all the MMOs, all the directors. Yeah, it's been a great year. It's been a wonderful year yes, indeed. indeed. Now getting into what you can expect in today's broadcast, Nigerian government eases holiday travel costs with free train rides and bus fare reductions. Isabel Dos Santos, the Angolian billionaire, hit with a 580 million euros asset freeze. Now Mozambique kidnappings continue to cause concern, the president says. And as Ashwin mentioned, we'll also be crossing over to Zambia, speaking to Mike Sichula. Just stay tuned for these and more on Africa. Good morning. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Let's get straight into our top stories. In order to alleviate the financial strain associated with holiday travels, the Nigerian government has introduced measures to provide relief to citizens during the festive season. The announcement made on Wednesday includes free train rides and a 50% reduction in public bus fares across the country. Dele Alake, the Minister of Solid Minerals Development and head of the Interministerial Committee on Presidential Intervention, emphasized that the initiative aims to enable domestic travelers to visit their loved ones and hometowns without stress and the extra burden imposed by the high cost of transport around this period. The move is seen as a gesture to enhance the well-being of citizens during the festive season. The discounted interstate fares and complimentary train rides slated to be in fact from December 21 to January 4, are part of a collaborative effort with companies operating luxury buses across 22 routes nationwide. In our next story, an Angolan billionaire who has been described as Africa's richest woman has lost a high court battle to stop her assets from being frozen. Isabel Dos Santos, the daughter of a former president, is being sued by telecoms firm Unitel. The Angolan company is seeking damages of $733 million arising from financial decisions taken by Dos Santos during her time as a director of the firm. Now, Dos Santos says the case is a political vendetta. Critics of Ms. Dos Santos have long claimed she used her position of influence in Angola to enrich herself at the expense of the state, allegations she has strongly refuted. The BBC has reported on leaked documents alleging she made her fortune through corruption and exploiting resources in Angola during her involvement with some of the country's largest companies. Dos Santos said at the time that the claim was based on fake documents and false information. It is, co it is a coordinated political attack in coordination with the Angolan government. As of 2020, Ms. Dos Santos was based in London. Unitel had asked London's High Court to grant a worldwide freezing order over her assets. Dos Santos and companies linked to her are already subject 
to a number of asset freezes around the world. The case against Ms. Dos Santos concerns loans made in 2012 and 2013 of around $400 million from Unitel to another company, Unitel International Holdings. UIH is incorporated in the Netherlands and is owned and controlled by Ms. Dos Santos, according to court documents. From early 2020, UIH stopped paying any interest on the loans, the High Court was told. Now, the president of Mozambique, Felipe Nyusi, acknowledged yesterday in parliament that despite improvements in the fight against crime, there remains a concern about kidnapping crimes that plague the country. Despite these advances, cases of kidnapping continue to concern us, even with a reduction in six compared to 12 cases registered in the same period of 2022, said the head of state in his annual speech on the state of the nation at the Assembly of the Republic in Maputo. Of these cases, four linked to the crime of kidnapping were clarified 31 individuals were arrested the same ones involved in previous kidnappings and a principal was also arrested in the republic of south africa as part of judicial cooperation between authorities of the two countries added new scene for a few weeks now the city of maputo has been experiencing a new wave of kidnappings especially of business people with two portuguese mozambicans being targeted in just over a month and suspicions of the involvement of agents linked to the police investigation in this type of crime. Moving on, Guinea-Bissau President Umaro Sissoko Mbalo has sacked Prime Minister Geraldo Martins just a week after reinstating him to the post. Martins was first appointed Prime Minister in August but lost the position earlier this month when President Mbalo dissolved the government following a foiled coup attempt on the 1st of December. The President then reappointed Mr. Martins as Prime Minister last week. A presidential decree issued on Wednesday announced that Rui Duarte de Barros, who previously served as the West African nation's transitional prime minister between 2012 to 2014, would replace Martins. Last month, there were clashes between two army factions in the capital, Bissau, while President Mbalo was away at the UN's COP28 climate conference in Dubai. Mr. Mbalo promised serious consequences for the perpetrators of the unrest, which he termed a foiled coup, the second against his leadership in under two years. And the United Nations World Food Program has temporarily suspended food assistance to some parts of Sudan's state of Gezira as fighting spreads south and east of Sudan's capital Khartoum, the aid agency said in a statement on Wednesday. Around 300,000 people have fled Gezira in a matter of days since clashes erupted last week on Friday, WFP said. WFP has put food deliveries on hold in some locations in Gezira, said Eddie Rowe, WFP's representative and country director in Sudan adding that its teams are working around the clock to provide food aid in locations where it is still possible. His includes thousands of displaced people who have left Wad Madani, Sudan's second largest city and the capital of Al Jazeera state, Jazeera state rather, in recent days as paramilitary rapid support forces advanced. Those have been our top stories on Africa. Good morning after the break. We swing over to Mike Sichula one last time for the year. Hello and welcome to today's Sports Rep Show. I am your host, Jesse Jackson. Kaoraita. In replay, Namibia, who had won the toss for the first time on this tour. Good day, everyone. Time for international sports news. Starting off with tennis news, both on the WTA for women's and... It's time for us to cross over to Mike Sichula in Zambia. Mike, what do you want Nerebuino, Mulibwanji, Africa, good morning to all our viewers. Africa, good morning indeed. So it seems like there's a clash between the Zambian Catholic bishops and uh, the latest directive from the Pope with regards to officiating same-sex marriages. Please tell us more. Yes, uh, this has come uh, from the Zambia, the Zambia 
Conference of Catholic Peace, uh, which is their leading body here in Zambia. So according to them, the declaration through Pope Francis is not and should not be considered as an endorsement of same-sex marriages, a statement that they issue right, but rather effective response to the numerous questions about the possibility of impacting a blessing on the same-sex marriages. So the, the Catholic bush bishops have stated that uh, whatever has been attributed in the Western media uh, to the Pope will not have any impact on the Zambian Catholic uh, Church. They say that they will only re, the, the, the Catholic Conference reaffirms the traditional teaching of the Church that declares homosexual acts to the to be not to be contrary to natural laws. So hence, under no some such circumstances can they be approved in Zambia. The message further read. So it is clear that uh, the Catholic bishops in Zambia will not partake to any message that has been attributed to the Pope, the uh, senior member of the church, regarding uh, same-sex marriages, as it has been widely uh, uh, announced across many uh, Western medias and uh, also African media. So this is the position that the Catholic bishops here in Zambia have stated mm -hmm. on the matter that has divided the church. A little bit of a follow-up on that one, Mike. Do you think that this possibility of some kind of retribution from the Vatican, um, because, I mean, this is the Pope. It's quite clear that he's considered the vicar and the head of the Catholic Church. And if any decision he makes, you know, is put out, it's expected to trickle down. Do you believe there'll be any kind of retribution from the Vatican? It depends because most of these Catholic bishops are said to have been present during uh, the deliberation before the Pope made this announcement. So it is highly likely that the Pope will have to make uh, 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 certain uh, changes to the, the Catholics across the, uh, the, the world where these senior members of the church within their respective countries have denounced his statement despite him being the leader of the Catholic Church. So we are yet to see what will happen uh, going forward from the Vatican. I'm quite interested to see how that further develops. Moving on, what is the latest update on rescue operations on the trapped miners? Yeah, so the latest update is that uh, so far 11 uh, miners have been uh, retrieved. Uh, uh, then only one person was retrieved alive, a 49-year-old man. The rest have been retrieved as uh, as dead bodies. So according to the government, it says that it will take at least two months to reach where the remaining missing miners are believed to be trapped at the Senseli open pit mine in Chingola. So Copper Belt Province Minister says that they concluding the research at one where it is believed that nine miners are trapped may take uh, 60 days. So Mr. Matambo says that uh, the technical team that has also been beefed up by uh, experts from South Africa uh, has made uh, progress at the site, uh, at site two and site three. So it is uh, highly unlikely that uh, uh, in the next uh, one month, going into two months, this operation can come to an end. Then also the Zambia National Service that are also helping uh, to, to, to retrieve the miners uh, says progress has been made on the other two tunnels that the rescue team is likely to conclude the search in the next few days. So quite a sad development. So what the Zambian media has been doing is that uh, documenting the, the, the families and also mm -hmm. getting their views uh, so that they give a perspective of who their missing members were doing before they got trapped under that mine. Truly saddening news, Mike, and yeah, what a way to end the year. Let's move over to your next two stories, entertainment and sport. Your maps wants his car back, and Rachel Kundananji has received an incredible award. Please dive in. Yeah, so your maps, uh, a popular Zambian musician, which I might say, is, uh, is coming, is heading to Namibia for some shows during this festive season. All so right. for those of our viewers who might not have seen him, they have an opportunity to see him. Then, well, back home, Yomax is demanding for his uh, his car, which was uh, grabbed 
from him by authorities who suspect that uh, he might have he could have been bought using uh, funds that are, uh, are suspected to be stolen. So according to your maps, he has engaged uh, a legal team uh, seeking that uh, the vehicle should be given back to him uh, because the Anti-Corruption Commission uh, claims that uh, they are not investigating your maps because your maps, as you can see from the background, that was the day that uh, he received that latest vehicle behind there. And uh, he says that uh, he used his money that he has earned through shows and, uh, and other businesses, other endorsements to buy that car. And there's no need for the Anti-Corruption Commission to, to, to suspect that uh, it was given to him by a person who is politically connected. So he's demanding his car back. Then moving into sports, Zambia's national team forward, Lecho Kundananji, became the first African player ever to top the Go 50s list, men or women in the history of the list. So the Zambian star made an electric 2022-2023 season where she scored 25 times in just 29 league games for Madrid CFCC before adding a first ever World Cup goal. Uh, 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 in July. So she is there uh, in jazz club, jazz number 17, and uh, she's been in prolific form, and uh, she also helped Zambia qualify back to the WAFCON. So mm -hmm. this achievement is something that uh, a lot of Zambians, including the Football Association, uh, the President, are happy with the achievement of Lecho Kundananji. All right. Thank you very much, Monk, for bringing us the stories from Zambia, not just today, but throughout the year. It's been incredible having you on the show. Yeah, quite uh, a, a, a good achievement, you might say, because from January to December, we've been on the show Tuesday and Fridays, giving our viewers what they, deserve, they have to hear from Zambia. And I must say that uh, the team uh, back in Namibia has been has been incredible, uh, been very helpful. Uh, Granola, Diana, uh, Aina, as well as Ashwin, this is something that uh, we have to promise our viewers that come next, we are going to be again on the grinding seats to give our very best. And as we go towards the, uh, the, the this festive season, I just wish us all the very best during this festive season. And uh, let's hope that uh, they enjoy it is possible and uh, we meet again next year. Thank you very much, Africa. Good. A truly beautiful message from a wonderful man. All right, let's head straight to the weather predictions. seeking connection to each other, to the world, to the spaces we exist in. It's like force, forcemanship right now from the lads. You might be physically ready, your body is ready. But but he has another chance and it is a goal from But just enough yes. next... So, we will be doing this for the mountain climber. More advanced, slightly advanced. Do, 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 do. So, is your trolley right? Man. I love that. I love that. So then we kickstart our countdown at number five. With this one. Op netwerk TV is Klets Kompas, gesels ons nies van maanda tot donnera. Ons kyk ook na die weer en meer. 
Stories wat jou raak en stories wat saak maak. We have made a mistake in denying me bail and we have made several other mistakes in many other cases. The channels that teach us something new or reflect our expression. So it goes beyond switching to the right station. It's about choosing the experience that can adorn the present, dressing it with our tastes as we expand our preferences because what we are actually connecting to is boundless, limitless human energy. And this is the spirit of NTV. In our economic news story, Egypt's sovereign wealth fund has signed an $800 million deal to sell a stake in seven prominent hotels to Egypt's Talat Mustafa Group in his drive to raise funds and foreign currency. Prime Minister Mustafa Mabdoli said on Wednesday, revenues from selling stakes in state assets have reached $5.6 billion so far. Let's have a look at the economic indicators just before we swing back with the sport. Now, major clubs and leagues across Europe had rejected the Super League in favor of the status quo following Thursday's EU court verdict, which said UEFA and FIFA contravened EU law by preventing the formation of a Super League. Manchester United were one of the first to say they remain committed to playing in competitions run by Europe's soccer governing body UEFA as did German champions Bayern Munich. In our next story, the International Skating Union cannot penalize speed skaters if they compete in new money spinning events. The European Union's top court said on Thursday as it upheld earlier orders, the case centered on a complaint by Dutch Olympic speed skaters Mark Twittert and Niels Korstelhoff after ICU threats of a lifetime ban stopped them from competing in a lucrative ice derby events run by a South Korean company. Mm -hmm. All right, those have been our sports stories. We'll take a break and return for the highlights. Neo Paints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Let's quickly dive into the highlights from this morning's broadcast. Nigerian government eases holiday travel costs with free train rides and bus fare reductions. Isabel Dos Santos, Angolan billionaire, hit with 580 million euro asset freeze. Guinea-Bissau president sacks newly appointed prime minister. 
And with that, we've come to the end of the broadcast. I can't believe this is our last show together <laughs> for the year. For the year, it's the last Africa Good Morning for the year. We'll certainly be back in two weeks, um, I believe on the 8th of January, and we'll be back doing exactly what we love to do, which is making sure you stay well informed on everything happening on the African continent and beyond from Glenora Shapura and Ashwin Berry one last time. Swera Jaganaka.